This is the movie on graphing points on a coordinate plane. As always, make sure you have your graphic organizer ready to go. Let's start with some vocabulary. Well, the first vocabulary word I want to introduce you to on this page is right here, and it's the x-axis. The x-axis is the horizontal number line, and it goes right along here. The next word I want to introduce you to is y-axis. The y-axis is the vertical number line, and it goes right through here. Now the origin, we get a different color over here, here we go. The origin is where the, that should be a two, excuse me, the two axes meet, which is at zero, zero. The zero on the x-axis crosses the zero on the y-axis, and that's called the origin. Now, there's some other important words I want you to also notice. Right here, quadrants. When the x-axis and the y-axis cross each other, it makes four different areas. Those are called our quadrants. We have quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. That's even a, a more general area. It allows you to give directions a little bit better if you can say you're in quadrant one, two, three, or four. But the most specific way that you can give quadrants to somebody is by telling them what the ordered pairs are, and that's this vocabulary right up here. Ordered pair is always given with the X coordinate first and then the Y, and that gives the coordinates that locate a point, and that's relative to each axis. Now, for example, 3, 4 means we go over 3, up 4. We have the 3 tells you the X axis, the 4 tells you the Y axis. Coordinate or ordered pairs can also be negative. For example, we go on the x-axis over to negative 2, and the y-axis is negative 3. Now that you know this basic information, we're going to put it into play. Graphing points. There are two main steps to graphing points. Number one, find the x-axis coordinate first. Remember, the x-axis is going left to right. After you do that, then you find the y-axis, which is the vertical line going up and down. One way of remembering this is to tell yourself, over first, then up, or down. Now, if you wanted somebody to get to A, point A, you would tell them 3, 5. That means we go over to the 3, and then we go up to the 5, and sure enough, there's A. To find point B, you would tell somebody negative 2, 3, which means on the x-axis, let me change color here, we go over to the negative 2, but then we go up to the positive 3. To find C, you would tell them negative 5, negative 2. On the x-axis left to right, you go over to the negative 5 and then down negative 2. And the last example on here is 9, negative 4. x-axis is all the way over to the 9 and then down negative 4. Now if you've noticed, each one of these points is also in a different quadrant. A is in our quadrant 1, and if you notice the X and the Y are both positive numbers. B is in quadrant 2, and if you notice the X is negative over here, but the Y is positive. C is in quadrant 3, X is negative, and Y is negative. So in quadrant 3, 
both of your x and y coordinates are both negative. And d is in quadrant 4, where the x is positive, but the y is negative. Let's see if we can get some practice on marking, finding these coordinates on a uh, coordinate grid. First one is A, it's 2, 2, which means we're going to go over 2, up 2, and we're going to end up right there, and that's our A. B is negative 3, negative 6. Since they're both negative, we know we're going to be in quadrant 3. On the x-axis, we find negative 3, and then we go down to negative 6, and it's right there. C is at 3, 0. 3 means we go over to the 3, and the 0 means we're not going to go up or down. So it would be right there, and it stays on the x-axis. D is at negative 9, 2. So we're going to go all the way to the left to negative 9, and then the 2 is positive, so we're going to go up 2. And that would be right here, and that's D. E is 0, negative 5. The 0 tells us that once we get to the origin, we're going to stay put, and we're not going to go left or right on the x-axis. But the negative 5 means we're going to go down but we're going to stay right there on that y-axis because the x didn't move anywhere, and that's E. F is 0, 0, which you remember is smack dab in the middle of the x and y-axis, and that's also called the origin, and that's where F is. Please make sure you write all these down on your notes before you continue on. Now let's see if we can practice writing some of the coordinates. Well, A, if you were to fig tell me with the coordinates for A, what would you say? Well, hopefully you tell me you go 5, 4, over 5, up 4. B, over negative 6, up 5. So we would write that as negative 6 for the X, 5 for the Y. C over negative 2, and then if you notice, it doesn't go anywhere from that, so it's going to stay at 0. So C is considered negative 2, 0. On the x-axis, we did move off the origin. We went to negative 2, but the y we didn't move off, so it stays a 0. D over 7 down negative 2, so it would be 7, negative 2, and that puts us in quadrant 4. E, well E, we didn't go left or right. We stayed right on the x-axis. We didn't go anywhere, but we do go down 4. So the x would be 0, the y is negative 4. F we go all the way over to negative 10 and then down negative 5. Okay, so we went over negative 10 and down negative 5. Excuse me, so let's write that as negative 10, negative 5. All right, now hopefully this made sense and everything was good to go. If you have any questions, please make sure you ask in class tomorrow. And today's magical word is patience. Thank you. Bye.